This is the Halftime Show with Omar al on Pulse95. Salam and welcome to the Halftime Show with Omar al I'm your host covering everything sport, international and local. I'm really excited about this show because the last time I brought the first guest on, it was incredible. A lot of good feedback. Uh, we go way back myself and him. He's a great coach. Uh, Craig McManus was on the last time and we, we had a good chat. But this time, we've got another superstar with him. So I'm spoiling you guys, man. I told you. I told you I was going to make it happen. And I am making it happen. Um, Zainab and Mudin, if I got that right, is on the show as well today. And I've got them both on the show right here. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Um, congratulations to both of you on the fantastic success and progress you have both made in the football community. I mean, the moves that you guys are making um, really shows that hard work and, and genuine motivation really gets you far. It's a pleasure to have you both on the show. Craig, tell me first, um, and just to rejig people's thoughts, what is the Homeless World Cup? So the simplest way to explain it is it's a, a kind of celebration of football. So there's over 50 countries, both men and women's team from um, all over the globe, every continent that features at the tournament. Fundamentally, what happens is in each country there'll be a partnership. You know, for example, Street Soccer London, who um, run weekly, monthly programmes to support men and women who have maybe experienced social exclusion um, or um, homelessness, addiction, mental health issues, or just are feeling really uh, focused and want to change the world through the game. And um, each year we come together and play a, an, an international tournament. So unfortunately because of COVID, um, we've not had one for a couple of years, but the last one was in Cardiff 2019. Um, and yeah, it's just a week or eight days of just wonderful activity where fundamentally on the pitch we play a four-a-sided game um, which results in someone ultimately winning the, the Homeless World Cup. Um, but there's also off the pitch there's this culture of friendship, connection, sense of belonging um, and real trust which has obviously been missing from the world the last couple of years um, because of what everyone's experienced. So it's actually quite a beautiful, hard to explain experience but it's someone that everyone should definitely try and experience during their, their life to come along as a spectator or if someone's experiencing challenges in their life or want to evidence and focus on challenges then this is a tournament to be involved in. And it gets you to meet um, interesting people, talented people. So Zainab, I'm going to shift this over to you now speaking of interested and talented people. Um, oh, stop it. Where, where did your journey start? Because I know you didn't only represent England at the Four Nations Challenge, you also went on to win it as well, you know. <laughs> Just thought I'd drop that out there early. <laughs> how, was that, how was that experience for you? Um, I think when we came into... When, when I found out about this Homeless World Cup Four Nations tournament, it was just like, it was something that I could see in the future, like going to Scotland, I've never been to Scotland. So it's like, first of all, I'm going to go to Scotland to play football and I'm also representing England. And it was just like, I'm just going to play to play. Like, I don't want to pressure myself about winning, but I want to win. So when we actually did win, there was a point where I just stood and I was like, Whoa, I was looking at my friend Sean and I was like, Sean, did we just do this? <laughs> like, we actually won. And that feeling was amazing. Like, not only did it's not like just winning a game or something, we, we actually won the whole tournament. And in a way, we proved ourselves because there were times in that tournament, I feel like there were a few people that weren't rooting for us. And it was like, we won it. Mm. How do you feel? Mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So that was amazing. Yeah, I mean, and football does a lot of great things. And, and obviously, just from your energy and your vibe and, and, and seeing that question, why people wouldn't want you to win. But with Craig being there and yourself being there, and I speak to you guys, and, and, and I'm very interested to know, coming back from COVID, and Craig, you mentioned this earlier as well, restriction-wise, how's it been to almost... Um, we often hear like it's, it's like a, a breath of fresh air. How has it been to actually be back on the field with people around? I'll tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. It froze for like two seconds. It's all right. But I kind of caught the last bit. So I'll say so, what I was saying was, I was saying, how was the recent experience coming back from COVID with 
being able to actually get back on the pitch? Oh, it was needed. It was needed because not playing football for a while, it's just like you have that, there's something in you, you just need to take out. And training is, yeah, cool, I'm playing football, I'm training, I'm shooting in a goal, but actually playing with a team, having that team experience, having that competitiveness come out of you because like when you even when you train with your own team you don't go you don't go full force with the tackles because that's your teammate but when it's someone else it's like I don't care I'm gonna go I'm gonna go all in <laughs> so that was <laughs> that was needed like yeah, yeah it was, yeah. And, it was and great even from my perspective it. Even from my perspective, Zena, but it was it was like from a coach's perspective, and obviously I've got to give a bit of shout out to my colleague Jack Bedou, who did lead the women's team, you know, and, yeah. and um, you know, obviously, you know, Jack, um, you know, being a really important uh, part of that process. But from Jack and I as a coach, um, and being a, it, it was what's been missing is that sense of camaraderie, that sense of connection, that sense of um, achievement. I think success can be really. Um, you know, different for each individual. And what we went out with a mission in this particular tournament, the Four Nations tournament, was to have fun, you know. Um, and what I saw was the women enjoy themselves on the route to victory, you know. And, and I think because of the culture that we set and because of the challenges it had during COVID of, of being that, being eliminated from us, you know, we didn't have the opportunity to have that human connection, that fun, that laughter, you know, um, and it was all fairly serious for a while. But that's that was the ethos of the tournament. Let's go out and play with a smile on our face. So let's not let's try and win, but not win at all costs. And because we set that environment, I feel that the women really responded to that. Um, so in adversity, when things weren't going their way, they knew that ultimately it was going to be okay. But when we did, you know, get on that final um, day in the final game, they knew that there was an opportunity to, to win. But if they didn't win, it was still OK, you know. And, and I think that, um, you know, that was ethos we sent. So it was really important because COVID's been really challenging, you know. And, and, and I'll be honest, we're seeing the real effects of it now in our communities. You know, um, during the time we, as resilient as human beings as we are, and we can adapt, but the consequences now are coming through. A lot of challenges around mental health, a lot of challenges around, um, you know, that drive, ambition that some people have. So I feel that um, this tournament was a wonderful way, Z, and I hope you, you agree, with just to like come mm -hmm. together, you know, yeah, and celebrate you. with our friends from, you know, England, uh, sorry, Scotland and, and Wales and Northern Ireland. It was actually quite beautiful at times. There was there was one incident, and I've, I've, there was one time in the day I've got to share this, and, I'll, I've, and, and I'm sure Zena will back me up. I'm definitely not a dancer, right? <laughs> but they brought they brought a DJ onto the pitch just when it was it was downtime. They brought a DJ on the pitch, and all of us were dancing on the pitch, and it was I, I, it was literally one of the moments of right. We've been through that. Now we're on the way forward, and, and things are looking more um, hopeful. So it was quite a beautiful moment. Never mind my dancing, right enough. What's his footwork like, Zena? <laughs> Be honest, what's his footwork like? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that note, coming up straight after the break, we're going to be talking to them more about what football does as a lesson in life. And also we're talking about mental health. Right after this on The Only Place to Be at 3, the halftime show on Pulse95. This is the Halftime Show with Omar al Duri on Pulse95. Salam and welcome back to the Halftime Show with Omar al Duri. If you're kicking yourself for missing the show, don't worry. You can catch all of our podcasts on Apple, Spotify, SoundCloud. Or if you prefer a visual and want to see these two beautiful human beings, head over to the YouTube channel Pulse95 Radio and they are there. We cover some important topics like mental health, gut health and how important recovery is on performance and recovery so now there was something you said earlier and and i you know i cracked up zena but you're saying something you were like you know what in practice we uh we don't go all out and you know we you know but then when match is different i don't know if you've trained with this one <laughs> <laughs> I, I was on a course okay. with him i'll tell you a little something i was on a course with him and thank god i was on the same team as him and we didn't we were doing the whole like um, theory thing we were sitting on the table for us and then we'd go out to the pitch and then we'd have to implement what we were learning and this one <laughs> start, firstly when he's sitting down he's a lot smaller <laughs> when he gets up he's just looking at him like oh boy and then he was like, i used to play a little bit so okay fine so he's thankfully he's on my team <laughs> ball comes out to the left he's 
bummed down the wing and he's whipped the ball in with his left foot and then the ball comes to the middle and then he's there and he clatters someone right through and, and that's him taking it easy and we're like this is a coaching I session. Well, I know how to play one way. <laughs> yeah, and then and then he goes, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, yeah, yeah, I'll have, I'll have defeat, defeat, and we'll give it to him in one twos and all that. And we're thinking, all right, so this guy's serious. <laughs> this guy, this guy has played before. So when you were saying, yeah, you know what? Because it's nice to be out there. I was thinking, she ain't seen Craig. <laughs> so just thought I'd share that with you. Um, thankfully, I was on his team. But yeah. Um, we were saying a couple of things earlier in the first segment and uh, I wanted to kind of elaborate on that. Zeno, like, we often talk about how important sport is to life and, and its lessons and obviously getting back on the pitch was something and being mm-hmm. able to interact with people. But talk me more about how football has created like a positive change like for you. Um, for me personally, I'd say football has always been a big part of my life. Like. It wasn't something that I took very seriously up until I was 16 and I'm 18 now, so it's only been two years. So I just used to play for my school team and just knowing that I had a match after school, I would just be so excited. It would just get me through maths because I hated that subject. (laughs) Like, listen, 35 minutes and I've got football, 35 minutes. And then it's just been something that's been growing in me, like... I just thought by the end of year 11, yeah, I'll just quit football, like, it's not that deep. Then I realised, like, I can't stop this. This is a part of me. And um, when I did get into other clubs, it just, it, it breaks up my week as well, because a lot of us now, like, for me, I've taken a gap year this year, so I'm working and I'm also playing football. And it breaks up my week because I know if I just work then went to went home it would just be work eat sleep work eat sleep and it's just this constant cycle and I, I drive myself crazy because I can't do that it's too monotonous for me I can't do that so with football it breaks up my week and it just gives me a release and if I didn't have that release I'd know that there's a lot of things that I would hold in because I know when I'm on that pitch I'm just thinking about football I just need to get my stress out, my anger out. Everything is just on the pitch and it just stays there. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So in that sense, football not only helps me physically, but it helps with my mental health as well. Amazing. And Craig, you've had your own challenges along your like remarkable journey. We've covered some of that before. What would you say was the most challenging mentally and, and your how did you manage to turn it around? Um, I think... It's very interesting when we talk about mental health because there's a lot of factors that bring that into play, you know, and a lot of conditions and it's very much what we've experienced recently. When, when I play football I'm in the moment, it's probably one of the few times that or through experiences or activities I have where I just feel I'm in the moment. Um, and but that experience of suffering and, I, and and I'm not I'll be honest and transparent about it there's still days I have tough times you know and obviously um, through my battle of um, addiction and homelessness and, and these sort of things and football was always a thing but it was my release it was my escape it was my safe space it's where the, you know that's why we talk about sense of belonging it's like where I, as soon as I walked on that football pitch I belonged you know um, and I was in a place where I, I feel I could thrive um, and and that just improved things like self-esteem, confidence, connection. Um, and when I've got that, then I, I'm, I'm in a better place. It's that simple. And even during COVID in particular, when that was taken away, um, you know, we had to find other mechanisms of, of trying to connect and mechanisms like online or, or these sort of things are really important. But nothing is better than putting the boots on and getting on the pitch. You know, there's not a better experience for me. Um, and... You know, I still play and over. I play in a, I'm still a vets team. You know, it's an over 35, even though um, I'm over 40 now. But I'm over 45 now. But it's it's um, every Sunday. I, I can't. I just really look forward to it because now the element of football has changed for me. It's not just about three points. You know, or it's not about winning silverware or promotions or whatever. When I'm playing, you know, it's now about being able to connect with like-minded people you know and, and I think fundamentally that's been really important so so mental health will always be you know something that challenges me you know but football is, is something that offers me that mindful kind of mindfulness um, state of um, freedom and connection Zainab I've got to ask you how do you reset? In terms of what? 
So you know how you were saying before, like when you have a, if it was just work before you took your gap year, it was mainly just like that same kind of routine. But mm -hmm. how do you get yourself out of that? Plug into football, for example, or other things. What, what do you do to kind of get yourself reset? Um, I'd say it all starts probably 10 minutes before my shift finishes. It's just like, yeah, football, 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 let's go home. Mm. Um, I have like a playlist that gets me a bit. I will say like this, this might sound, um, I wouldn't say weird, but it sounds different because a lot of people like to listen to to house and stuff to get them pumped up for like match days and football. But for me, I actually listen to Nasheed like what? right before football. Yeah, exactly. Like, and everyone knows me and I, <laughs> I love my music. Mm. Like I, I got my job, got my house, not house, relax, not house. <laughs> got my job, got my other stuff. <laughs> but right before football, it's Nasheed because I, I'm a very, I'm quite loud, I'm quite energetic. I don't need to be pumped up. I need to be calmed down. Mm. So by me listening to Nasheed, it also like gives me perspective as well. Nice. Like why I'm also playing football. Yeah, I'm playing football for me, but I've got to have the right intentions when playing football. Mm. I'm not in it for the fame. I'm not in it for this. I'm playing because I like it and because I want to make a difference. I want people to see me on the pitch and be like, oh my gosh, that's that missing girl. When possibly like other girls want to play because they've seen me play. Mm. Do you understand? So, in that sense, I'd say I listen to Nasheed to calm me down, to get me relaxed. So when I'm on the pitch, I'm focused. Because mm -hmm. if I'm too energetic, I start making jokes, and I just don't. Mm. I just don't listen. Amazing. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I'm I'm worried to ask you, Craig, what you listen to before a game, man. I have no idea what kind of playlist you got. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell you, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm, I am, I'm, I've started to listen to other things now, you know, and, and, and different, and so, you know, so podcasts for me are one of the most important things, aren't they now, you know, mm. it's our travel of, of, you know, when I'm listening or I'm going to play football, I kind of reset um, by, um, you know, listening to something that's going to put me in a different state of mind, you know, and, and obviously, particularly on the day of the final day when we're in the Four Nations, I had to relax, what Z was saying there about, you know, stepping back because sometimes in the heat of the battle, you can forget oneself, you mm -hmm. know, and that's, you know, so so what we I like to do is reset and, and start with some compassion around myself, you know, nice. and treat myself a bit of compassion. And, because sometimes our thoughts before a game we can catastrophize, can't we? Or what happens if we get beat? Or what happens if this happens? Or what happens when, that, when we don't know? It's out with our control. So I've tried to do a wee bit of work on uh, tolerance of the uncontrol, you know, of what's uncontrollable, you know. So, so it's important that I get messages into my brain before a game or before a coach or before I have to give a vital team talk um, to, you know, like um, to pick things up because I believe success leaves clues, you know, so I look at successful people and the clues that they leave and I try and bring that into my life, you know, and, and try and amplify that rather than looking at what's not happening or what's going wrong. I try and look at what's going right and, and, and make it that because I think I think that's where, um, you know, sometimes I could I could go backwards if I don't do that, you yeah. know. Wicked. Coming up next, we're going to pick their brains now on a couple of topics that are out there. Some fire round questions, a couple of heated debates. Let's see how it goes after this on the only place to be at three, the Halftime Show on Pulse 95. This is the Halftime Show with Omar al Duri on Pulse 95. So now welcome back to the Halftime Show with Omar al Duri. I'm your host covering everything sport, international and local. Hope you guys are having a blessed day wherever you're tuned in around the world, whether it's 95FM, Pulse95Radio.com, our app, Sharjah Broadcasting Authority, or even chilling at home watching us live on YouTube. Okay, Greg and Zainab, I'm going to throw some topics your way, one at a time. Right. You can get back to me in your opinion. There are no wrong answers. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Ready? Uh, Zainab, Messi or Cristiano? Ronaldo. Easy. She said Ronaldo as well. Uh, Craig, heading in football? Yes. All for it? I'm actually, it's, it's, a, it's a crucial part of the game. Mm. I do understand there's challenges and we have to protect young people, but I think there needs to be more research done. Um, but I feel it's uh, to eliminate heading. I would never have played the game. It was my strength. 
you know, and and um, but I do understand there's, you know, I'm, I'm not in any way an expert on it, so I don't want to be ignorant towards the challenges that this bringing out in the game around Alzheimer's or dementia, but it's I feel there's got to be heavily invested with the PFA to look at that, and it's, it's got to be done now. Good answer. Uh, Zena, this is a tough one. Uh, why did a chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Said it with such confidence. <laughs> um, Craig, I want to ask you... Um, <laughs> he's laughing. Uh, Newcastle takeover. What do you think? I think it's the way football's going, you know, and it's that simple, you know, it's an interesting one. I feel that Newcastle are a huge club um, and I feel that um, it's, it's long overdue before we see a club like that being successful. Money talks, Premier League's the richest um, league in the world. Uh, and I feel that if it's a very attractive opportunity to someone come in to a club like Newcastle, mm. can they win the league within five years? I don't think so. Could they win it within 10 years? I do think so. Okay. Um, and, you know, but it'll be fascinating because then it, now it just it potentially makes another Liverpool, um, Man U, Man City, you know, um, Chelsea, now with potentially Newcastle in that. It just makes it even more exciting. And I love football, so it just adds an element of spice that we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Zainab, FIFA 2022 or Football Manager 2022? Can I tell you something? <laughs> I don't do that stuff. You are? <laughs> I don't, I don't play FIFA. Okay. I know, I know, I know, I know. I didn't even have a PS4. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, okay. Uh-huh. Craig, back to you. Um, if you could spend one day on the training ground under any coach in the world, who would it be? It's got to be Pep. It's got to be Pep. However, however, this is really interesting. I watched, have you, there's a documentary on Amazon called The Three Kings. Mm-hmm. which is about Jock Steen, Bob, uh, Bill Shankly and, and Matt Busby. Mm-hmm. I'd love to spend a day with Jock Steen, who was obviously the first uh, Scottish man. He was a Scottish manager, but he was the first British manager to win the European Cup, and, and obviously I'm a Celtic fan. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I watched that documentary last week, and I thought I would love to work with a, some, a human being like that, yeah. um, but a tactical genius. Nice. Zainab, if you could be coached by any coach in the world apart from Craig, who would it be? Jack Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's got I, can love that. Sides. I love that. I like that. Um, back to Craig. Craig, um, the way that football is going at the moment now, everyone's talking about uh, different styles of managers. Which manager would you say you are closest to in terms of style? Um, we're just talking about Scottish football there and the difference, you know, and, and mm. I would like to feel that. Um, I am absolutely more of a, a kind of Steven Gerrard type manager, um, which Ooh. is young, vibrant, energetic, demands everything from his team, but not one at all costs, mm. who improves them technically, but he actually focuses on the group um, and making it, you know, so so players are um, can work different positions, different formations, different phases. Um, so I, I actually really, I've been watching Steve, Steven Gerrard really closely um, you know, over the last couple of years, and I think, think he's a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, manager and someone I'm, I really look up to. Even though he, uh, he, he coaches say. the team, you know that I, obviously the opposite from my support, but um, I think he's phenomenal. Yeah, and that and that's coming from a Celtic fan, so you know he's good. Yeah. That's coming from a Celtic fan. Yeah. Zeno, back to you. If you could play, uh, if if you could pick one player, would you pick Mbappe or Haaland? Mbappe. See, with such confidence, I believe you. Why am I? That-, <laughs> that guy is amazing. Like his vision is crazy. Him as do you know what? Do you know when a player just you just like a player, like you like their vibe, you like the way that they are, and it's just like man back all the way, mm. all the way. Okay, um, Craig, Celtic to win the um, Champions League. Or Celtic or, or Scotland to win the Euros. <laughs> Scotland to win the Euros. Nice. Zeno, yeah, I'm well, not. Yeah, go on. We 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 have been we were 
I know that you guys will never remember this, you, you know, but back in the, the 70s and 80s, we were a decent team <laughs> in Scotland. And, right. um, and and I feel that Scotland gets a bit of a bad rep, you know what I mean? And I, you've got, and from from a coaching perspective, you know, you know you've got coaches for years, Mourinho's and all these guys who have always done their badges in Scotland. And it just, and I think as a nation, um, we, even though I, I still, I'm on his Lincoln team, um, the, the, for Scotland it'd be unbelievable for a nation, you know, um, to, to get success on the football pitch, the pitch because again it's been really divided times, it's like challenging times and it would just really connect the communities. Mm. Zainab, if you would represent, I'm not sure where you're from, but if you were a national team, what national team would that be? I put, I put on the you spot put me now. in a sticky situation here. We can, get, we can have a couple if you want, but I'm going to take that and I'm going to take the club you support and then I'm going to ask you which one. Okay, so I can either represent England or Morocco, and my team is um, Chelsea. Okay, so so you either win it, you either win the African Nations Cup with Morocco, the Euros with England, yeah. or the champ. No, the Premier League with Chelsea because you've won the Champions League. Already. <laughs> Euros with England. Euros in England. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. It'll mean, it mean a lot to them as well. All right. Coming up after the break, we are going to be doing our <laughs> final segment with them. I'm going to be asking them how you can uh, keep in touch with them, where you can follow them, all that and more on the only place to be at three, the Halftime Show on Pulse95. This is the Halftime Show with Omar al on Pulse95. So now welcome back to the Halftime Show with Omar al -Dhuri. What a show we've had in store. I told you it was going to be good and it was a lot of fun. A lot of insight as well on the way these two think. And I like I like the, the, the diversity in there. One of my favorite parts from, from Zainab was reading the Nasheed and, and sorry, listening to the Nasheed before she plays because actually she's mm -hmm. like quite an energetic player. One of my favorite parts from, uh, from uh, Craig was admitting that Stephen Gerrard is his guy even though he's a celtic fan which is listen i told you we get exclusives here i'm probably he's not going to share with any of his friends after this but yeah what a fantastic way guys before we wrap up the show uh, i'd like to know more about what you guys are up to where we can follow you if you've got social media handles because i want to share that with people and hopefully are we going to see you on this side of the world uh in the next couple of years uh zainab we'll start with you right so my social media yes um on Instagram, Z A I unscroll, Z E E unscroll. And hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be in Dubai, the UAE, within the next couple of years because it's just too beautiful not to go. Yeah, and there's a huge football community here that would love to play football with you as well. My wife plays actually uh, for the UAE national team. Right. So I'm going to connect you with her and you're going to have a game to get that promise. All right? <laughs> Lovely. And Craig, to you, um, where can we follow you? I know you've got a lot of stuff happening. Can you let us know? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love you to follow the organisation that we're part of, Street Soccer London, um, which obviously are the lead partners for um, Team England um, at the Homeless World Cup. Um, and you'll find me on Instagram and Twitter and Craig McMahon is five. Um, but yeah, so we would love to, for us it's all about creating a football movement, so let's join it and let's try and change the game, um, sorry, change the, 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 the perceptions of, of what we see in the world through the game. <laughs> Uh, guys, thank you very much for coming on the show, man. I've had a lot of fun, maybe too much fun on the show. Um, and I hope and I hope you guys continue to share your progress. Uh, Zainab, it's been refreshing hearing your story. Craig, you're a man. You don't have to say any more than that. Um, and remember, guys, you can catch these guys. If you do miss the show, if you missed any of the show, head over to our YouTube channel, Pulse 95 Radio, and then we'll click on this episode. You see the halftime show there. We've got so many different people on there talking about their journeys, talking about their lifestyles, talking about their experiences, which is what we bring you. We bring different flavors to the show. And I'm very grateful to these two for coming on. Thank you very much, guys, for coming on. I salute you guys. Thank you Thank for having you. us. If you liked this episode of The Halftime Show, drop a like and subscribe. 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories. Bye -bye.